For the first time since February of 2020, in-person conferences were back in the Rose Hill School District. We share what went into that decision. And the high school marching band impressed at KBA State. We talked to several band members about the memorable performances. These stories and more straight ahead on Wake Up Rose Hill. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Rose Hill. Presented by Channel 7 News, I'm Serenity Kundell. And I'm Riley Funk. Before the pandemic, all parent-teacher conferences were held in person three days a week. But after the COVID shutdown in 2020, things changed. But for the first time in nearly three years, in-person conferences are back as an option. Alyssa Fair has the story. For the fall semester of the 2022 to 2023 school year, Rose Hill High decided to hold partial in-person parent-teacher conferences for the first time since the COVID year in 2020. However, they still offered the remote option of doing conferences. Principal Shannon Haydock explained that the in-person conferences allowed parents and guardians the opportunity to meet their kids' teachers and communicate face-to-face. -face. As in the past, we used to do only in-person. And, um, you know, with, uh, with the pandemic that came on and uh, we had to get away from that, um, we did find that um, going virtual you know a lot of, a lot more parents responded to us um which was good um, but as we've as we've come this far now uh, we thought it was time that uh, we gave the parents opportunity to to come back and meet face to face if they chose to um, they also had the option to to do a virtual conference uh, so we thought that uh, giving them the option of virtual or face to face was best way to go. Chemistry teacher Andrea Holland explained that from a teacher's perspective both the in-person and remote conferences are enjoyable. I actually enjoy both in-person and virtual because virtual allows for a little bit more flexibility for working parents but it's always good to see parents face-to-face um, -face, read body language and have side discussions that otherwise you wouldn't have. I had 10 people in person but I had a total of 23 responses um, overall. For Wake Up Rose Hill, I'm Melissa Fair. The Rose Hill Marching Band went to the KBA State Championship in October and came home with numerous awards. It was one of the best performances from the band in the past few years. Here's more from Olivia Schneewise. This year, the marching band performed the halftime show Rock the House. The show included the songs Smells Like Teen Spirit, Monkey Wrench, and School's Out. The band is led by teachers Nate Hills and Josh Turner, along with drum majors Becca Craddock, Dalton Bryars, and senior Tristan Lacoste. Hills said that the band this year placed well at all competitions. Yeah, we, we competed in the Kansas Bandmasters Association Marching Band State Championship, where we placed second in 4A and third overall in the 1-2-3-4A competition. We also went to Arkalala this past weekend, where we placed second in our class and uh, had a good old time at the, at the Glow Show. Hilligard also placed best in Class 4A and best overall at the Kansas Band Masters Association and best in class for Arkalala. Tristan Lacoste said that the best thing about being a drum major is watching the band progress. Oh man, um, you know, I think it's got to be seeing the development in the band uh, because in the past four years with uh, COVID and everything, this is the first season that we've really had that we get back into regular marching routine and it's fantastic. Hills and Turner say positivity is up in the band and they look forward to what comes next. Uh, we always look forward to concert season, uh, to putting our best foot forward in this, in this particular setting and um, uh, going into the spring and, uh, and playing musically. For Wake Up Rose Hill, I'm Olivia Schneewais. Fall Sports Senior Night is one of the most memorable nights throughout the school year as the school recognizes the senior in football, cross country, band, color guard, and dance. And Riley and I were there to capture some of the special moments. We hope you enjoy them.
On Thursday, October 20th, Riley McKee made his Rose Hill High School debut as choir director. Reporter Blake Milcheski, who is also in choir, has the story. On October 20th, the fall choir concert was held in the auditorium at 7.30. This was the first time Mr. McKee, the new choir director, has conducted a concert at Rose Hill. It featured performances from the concert choir, chamber singers, LaBelle, Glee, and the Rocket Airs. I talked to Mr. McKee to see what he thought of the event. Um, I thought it went very well. I got lots of compliments from teachers, from other members of the community, other students from other choirs. Um, kind of a good starting point for all the choirs and we got nowhere else to go but up. Uh, my favorite part was listening to all of the other choirs out in the audience cheer for the choir on stage. Um, like I said at the concert, all the choirs build each other up. There's no sense of like elitism or anything like that. We're all one big choir family and we're here to make sure everyone's doing their best. I'm glad everyone got to come and support the choir. Uh, we'll see you December 15th for the next concert. Not only was October 20th the choir concert, it was also the accompanist Miss Talbert's birthday. So, towards the end of the concert, everyone, including the audience, sang her happy birthday as she sat on stage. Blake with Wake Up Rose Hill. Coming up next, Levi Barton is one of several teachers who are Rose Hill High School's alums. We talked to him about being this show's Teacher of the Month. And later, Hayden ties a bow on the fall sports season. We will be right back after the commercial break. Rose Hill Family Dentistry is a dentist office located on 106 East Yeager Street. They're open Monday through Friday, typically from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Their passion is to make sure their patients are happy, healthy, and able to achieve a confident, amazing smile. They care for all ages, ranging from toddlers to even great-great-grandparents. You can contact them at 316-776-2144. Being a part of On The Clock does take its toll on the crew. I'm Dawson McNall. Thank you for watching On The Clock, and make sure to tune in to our podcast on Friday. Cut! Right after we finish, we have to do it all over again for the foreign exchange students. Buenos dias, amigos. Me amo Dawson. Being a part of Rock Solid does take its toll on the crew. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Stay Rock Solid. Cut! After we finish, we have to do it all over again for the foreign exchange students. Levi Barton was a 2014 graduate of Rose Hill High School and is now one of several alumni who teach in the district. He is also the show's Teacher of This Month. Scott Montgomery has more. This month's Teacher of the Month is Mr. Levi Barton, who's a Rose Hill graduate. I decided to start teaching because um, I really wanted to work with people and I also really liked art. Mr. Barton is a new addition to Rose Hill this year, replacing Ward Hilgers, who retired after the 2022 school year. He graduated from Rose Hill in 2015 and was a student of Mr. Hilgers. Mr. Barton has been teaching for three years and transferred from Andover Central Middle School. Um, so far, I think it's just the whole experience of starting kids um, with their art pieces in general, just um, starting paintings, being able to do a variety of artwork. Teaching at Rose Hill, I think the best part is kind of the freedom that I have. For Wake Up Rose Hill, I'm Scott Montgomery. Sam Lovell was on track to be a state caliber cross country runner this season, but a freak injury in the weight room changed that. Lovell is our student of the month and he gave some insight on how difficult that injury was. Addison Scanlon has the feature. Sam Lovell is a sophomore at Rose Hill High School. He's been in the district since kindergarten and finds it to be a very open and welcoming community. I would say my favorite thing about Rose Hill is that a lot of time it's a welcoming environment. We all get along a lot of the time that it's a great place to have fun and grow. 
He's involved in the cross-country team and has a good feeling about this year's season and the future fundraisers that are offering. Uh, my favorite memory this year would probably be doing going to Wamigo for cross country and running there because it was the my first 5k of the year and it was a great season opener really for me uh, track and field mainly because I'll be doing I'll probably be doing some fun races this year he recently suffered an injury to his hand and today he gave us more insight on it um, well the simple story is I was about to put some dumbbells down but one of them slipped out of my hand and what happened was as it slipped out of my hand it took the hand with it so it got crushed between the dumbbell I was holding which was a 25 and a like old school metal 45 so it was just crushed and then so I pretty much then I go to the nurse then I had to go to the hospital I got eight stitches four for a fingernail four for where it got lacerated and then, well, I got four of them out two days ago, so that was good news for me. And, well, I'm just right now moving on, just taking whatever challenge I get right now. For Wake Up Rose Hill, I'm Addison Scanland. Kirsten Lucent has been a four-year letterman in cross country and has placed 23rd or higher at the state meet in three of her four years at Rose Hill High School. Coming off her 18th place finish at this year's state meet, Lucent is our Athlete of the Month. Senior Kirsten Lucent is the Athlete of the Month. We interviewed Lucent on the most recent episode of the Rockert Players Lounge. Currently, Lucent is participating in cross country, but also played girls soccer last year. With the cross-country season coming to a close and the state tournament quickly approaching, we asked Lucent about her hopes for her personal record. Um, well, with the times on there now, I'm supposed to finish with 15th place with a 2050, but I want to get at least a 2030, which would rank me up to like 8th. We then asked about what the team wishes to achieve overall this season. Um, the team wants to at least get like top three. Barger's really trying to get us to get runners up. Uh, if everyone really puts their all into it, I believe that we could at least get third or second. Lucent is planning on attending Friends University next year, and we asked her why she chose to do so. The coach and the team are amazing people, and he's very like for you and he works really well with me, and so far he's worked really well with me, and also everything is covered money-wise, so it allows me to be able to save up to go to graduate school in a different state. This is Ryan Moore for Wake Up Rose Hill, and that was your Athlete of the Month. Hayden is coming up next with sports, so don't go anywhere. Are you looking for a restaurant for a relaxing Friday night? Then I would like to introduce you to Happy House. What makes Happy House special is that you can watch the chef prepare your meal, just choose your meat, seafood, vegetables, and watch as the chef prepares your dish fresh and juicy right before your eyes. If this has convinced you, then come to Happy House at 202 East Silk Knitter Street at Rose Hill now and enjoy your meal. Welcome back. I'm Hayden Swope here to give you your final update on the 2022 fall sports season. The football team traveled to Abilene and Wamigo for the first and second round of the playoffs. Let's take a look back at the Abilene game. The Rockets brought home a 23-6 victory over Abilene, with junior Blake Struble leading the defense with three interceptions. After the half, senior Boded Witted brings it in to put six more on the board, and Tegan Cobb's extra point is good. The Rockets lead 13-6 in the third quarter. After another Struble interception, senior Tyler Kaiser takes one in from the three-yard line to put Rose Hill up 20-6. After another Cobb field goal, the Rockets walk away with their first playoff win. This was the Rockets' second playoff victory in three years. Rose Hill then made the trip to Wamigo, but the results were much different. Even with starting quarterback Connor Wallace back, the Rockets were shut out 34-8. The Rockets in their season 4-6. The girls cross country team traveled to Wamigo for state last Saturday with the team bringing home a school record with Kirsten Lucent taking 18th and sophomore Kimber Lovell taking 20th. Altogether, the girls took fifth, best in school history. Coach Barger said he was proud of all the things the team accomplished this year. We were trying to get top three. That's kind of what our um, focus was on. And we were, we were short, um, evidently, but we did place better 
uh, than we've ever done, done before at the state meet. So when you get a chance to, you know, go to state uh, multiple times, um, you kind of get that, that expectation a little bit higher and higher and higher. The Rocket soccer team beat Elyria in the quarterfinals 3-0 here at home, but fell to Wichita Trinity 3-1 in the semifinals. The Rockets will return multiple starters for the 2023 season. And finally, the volleyball team traveled to Clay Center two weeks ago for Substate, falling to Mulvane for the first round. The Lady Rockets beat the Wildcats in set one 25-20 and put up a fight in the second and third set, losing 25-9 and 25-15. Riley, back to you. Thanks, Hayden. That's all the time we have for today. But be sure to check out Rocket Productions on social media platforms. I'm Riley Funk. And I'm Serenity Kendall. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Wake Up Rose Hill.